So what's going to be the product in this reaction? Well, when it comes to complex reactions like that, probably the best place for us to start is to cover up our answers and work through the problem. So what we have here is the azenolysis reaction because we have this O3 and we are coupling it together with the oxidative workup, which means that we are looking at the formation of the carboxylic acids and ketones. Remember that whenever we are dealing with the oxidative workup, which is done with the hydrogen peroxide, we are not going to be forming any aldehydes. It's always going to be carboxylic acids and ketones. Now, next, looking at my molecule, I know that azenolase is going to cut through my double bonds. So I'm going to cut through this double bond and I'm going to cut through this one. So overall, we are going to end up with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 carbon chain, where this carbon and this carbon going to bear the carboxylic acid functional groups and these two are going to be our ketones. So to make my life easier, I'm going to number my carbons so I can draw my nine carbon chain. And then at the position number one, we have a carboxylic acid. So I'm going to finish that one. Then at the position three, we have a ketone. So I'm going to draw that guy. Then at the eighth position, I have a ketone again. And finally, at the position number nine, I have another carboxylic acid. So I'm going going to draw that as well. So I'm going to redraw it real quick so I have a clean version of my molecule. But that's not the final product either. The thing is, whenever we have a carboxylic acid right next to a carbonyl like that, this is going to be a beta keto carboxylic acid and those compounds are unstable. So this molecule is going to undergo the decarboxylation reaction, ultimately giving us a chain with one carbon less and carbon dioxide, which means that the correct answer in this question is option C.